Last weekend, health officials confirmed a case of measles in a child from North Texas, and this is the second child confirmed with the contagious disease in Texas this summer, and both children were too young to even attend school. This morning, we go over the top things that parents need to know about measles with Dr. David Purse from the city of Houston. Dr. Purse, I can't thank you enough for joining me on Labor Day to have this discussion. I appreciate it. Parents need to know what to do about this. Yeah, they absolutely do. And since we don't see that many cases every single year, we want to remind people what what is measles? Just give us the rundown on that. Yeah, so measles is a viral illness. It's generally a respiratory illness. And for most kids, it's relatively mild. You just start off with a fever and then cough, runny nose or the usual viral things. But then there will be this characteristic rash. It's a tiny red spots that break out, generally starts on the head and then spreads down across the rest of the body. And the rash can last for about a week or so and they'll be coughing for about 10 days. The thing about measles, however, there's a couple of things about measles, but one of them is that it is incredibly contagious. It is one of the most contagious viruses uh, known to man on the planet. In fact, if there's a room of people, let's say it's like a small room, it's a waiting room, um, you know, a family gathering, and one person in that room, a child generally uh, has measles, up to nine out of 10 people in that room are going to catch it. It is incredibly protect, uh, uh, infectious, um, and I'm assuming that the people in that room are not vaccinated. That's the other thing. If you're vaccinated, you're, the vaccine works very, very well. And here's the other thing. Let's say you've got this room, and the child goes through, and a bunch of people get infected, and as people come in and out of that room, for the next two hours, anyone who enters that room can become infected. Not only is it incredibly uh, contagious, but it stays in the air for about two hours in whatever room that uh, that infected person has been in. It's, it's a real challenge. Yeah, that sounds absolutely awful. But do most kids get over this pretty easily or are we looking at serious complications when a child gets infected? Yeah, so the good news there is that most people, whether it be a child or an adult, and adults can catch it too, We'll get it, you know, we'll, we'll have this viral syndrome. It'll last for, you know, up to 10 days, maybe a little bit longer in some cases, and most will get over. Uh, unfortunately, there are a percentage of folks who are going to have some really, really devastating uh, consequences. Uh, even, even with the fact that it generally causes a pneumonia, there are cases of encephalitis. That's an infection where the brain swells. Mm -hmm. And about one out of four, about 25% of people who are unvaccinated and become infected are gonna get sick if they require hospitalization. Now, many, most of them are gonna survive. About one in a thousand are gonna get this encephalitis and about one to two out of a thousand are gonna die from this, even with the best care from a hospital. And we mentioned that the patients currently in Texas are too young to attend school. So I'm guessing that it impacts the very young more than other age groups, right? Well, so it tends to. So here in the United States, uh, beginning in 1963, we had a pretty aggressive vaccine uh, program that, that basically eliminated uh, measles in the United States. Now, we still see it other places in the world, in particular Europe, where we have a lot of travel back and forth. So it's not uncommon for us to get a case in the U.S. where somebody went to Europe was unvaccinated, caught it, and, and brought it back. It tends not to spread a whole lot because so many people in the United States are vaccinated. However, we're seeing those vaccination numbers are dropping, and so this, this is a real concern. Um, and this is why we want to encourage parents to make sure that they get their child uh, vaccinated. The other thing is that for people over the age of 20, and that's the other thing, we you know we talk about most of these illnesses, we talk about the very young and the very old. We talk about people like over 65. With mm -hmm. measles, you only have to be 20 years old to start being at high risk for complications. Adult measles or measles in an adult, I've seen it. It's rare. It is, it is just as devastating for the 20, 30, 40, 50 year old as it would be for a child who is unvaccinated and has an immature immune system. So uh, even you know with adults as young as 20 uh, can have really serious complications. Okay, so yeah, so this is a warning really for everybody. But if you think that you have measles or if you think your child has measles, then what, what should you do? It's a great question. It's important that you ask this question. If you think your child has measles, do not go to the doctor. Do not go to the emergency room. Call ahead. Call your doctor's office. Call them. Because if you go and you sit in the waiting room, you're going to be infecting large numbers of folks. So you need to call your doctor 
or call a healthcare professional to find out how they want to have you brought into the healthcare system where uh, you know others will be protected. So again, you know, it's, it's the fever, it's the runny nose, it's the usual sorts of things. But then this rash, and again, it starts as tiny red spots, starts in the head, and then starts spreading down the body. That's the hallmark. Now, here's the other challenge with with measles. Uh, people who are infected with measles will start spreading the virus a day or two even before they have the earliest symptoms. So you can see, the again, the importance of vaccination. You don't catch it in the first place. Once you caught it, you know, it's, it's, it's infectious. It's hard. It's not hard to treat, but um, uh, it's, it's hard to keep it from spreading to someone else. Yeah, I definitely can sense your urgency here. And I hear you mentioning several times that the best way to protect yourself is through vaccination. So where can people get vaccinated if, say, they don't have insurance, they're, you know, underinsured? What can they do? So health departments in the region have, have generally got a vaccine um, a measles vaccination program. So the Houston Health Department, for example, we offer uh, shots that's on a sliding scale based on what your income is at our health centers all across the city. And they're either free or maybe $5 or $15, depending on you know what your economic situation is. And so we'll be happy to go ahead and get people vaccinated. Uh, whatever your situation is, we'll work with you. And you can call 311 to find the nearest health center to you, uh, certainly within the city of Houston. Excellent. All good tips as always. Dr. Purse, thank you for joining me again. Thank you for joining me on Labor Day.